And may the God who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen. Good morning. My name is Bonnie Perry, and I'm the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Michigan. And this is our second piece in our preaching in the age of COVID. I once was blind, but now I see. In the span of a very few days, the world as we know it is changing and eroding, much like the property of a beachfront house on the shores of Lake Michigan. What we thought was sound is sand. Once upon a time, my friends, some of us, I know I certainly did, lived happily with the illusion that we could direct the course of our lives. I, we, acted as if we were in charge of our destinies, a people in control of our experiences, a people who could call 57 middle-aged and really mean it. But now, an inkling of our illusion is dawning in this new day. And in the midst of this pandemic, there is a substantive amount of conversation about those of us who will be the most vulnerable, the most susceptible to falling prey to this virus. Those of us who may not have enough access to food, to proper medical attention, we who may not have enough savings to carry us through a downturn in our economy, we who are hourly workers whose employers may not be able to or may choose not to keep us on. And we talk as if this virus will prey on some of us more than others. And in some ways, given the disparities of our society, that is true. Yet I also believe that we say this because to name the reality of this virus means that we can no longer ignore our own fragile existence. To name the power of COVID is to eradicate every defense we have constructed to prevent us from seeing our own solitary vulnerability. But what if, what if we were to choose to see our world as it truly is? What if we were to choose to alter our actions and activities? If we were able to do as the blind man did when Jesus spat on the ground, made mud from the dirt, and smeared it on the blind man's eyes and told him, go to the well of Siloam and wash. What if we were to do the same with the mud and muck of our illusions of control and power? What if we were to venture to the well of Siloam and what if we were to dare to wash away the grand illusions of our lives? That in this time of fear and uncertainty, what if we 
like that blind man of oh so very long ago? What if we could wash the mud of our lives away and finally see our world clearly? I was blind, but now I see. Now I see. Now I see what little control I have by myself. But I can envision, I can imagine what we might do together as beloved children of God, that we might understand that our best lives will always be intertwined one with another, connecting and succeeding together for the common good of our world. Together, but apart. Imagine, my friends, what we could do as massively competent people, gifted people, people with some access to power and resources. Imagine what we could do if we acknowledged both our incredible vulnerability as individuals and the precious power of understanding what it means to be a community of the beloved children of God working together to care for each other, to love each other, to be with each other together in this together. We do not have control, nor have we ever. Yet as a community, as a community of communities, we can literally alter the course of this pandemic. We can do as Christianity has done throughout the centuries. We can offer transformative care. We can partner with every group of goodwill who is, committing to assist, who is committed to assisting people in need. We can lead the way in physical distancing without ignoring social distancing, yet going out of our way to make new connections, meet new people, assist everyone, offer some of our money so that others may have a bit, offer our time so that others may not be put at risk, offer our distance so that all of us may breathe more safely. There is in this virus a pathway for clarity, an opportunity for us to see our lives and our world clearly. And bit by bit, Zoom call by Zoom call, as we are living into this new world, we are seeing and we are being with each other in new and profound ways. And as we continue to see more, to wash more of the muck from our eyes, it is our call to act, to love, to become the people whom God is inviting us to be, whom God is longing for us to be, so that we might create a community of communities where our illusion of control is gone. Replace, though, with the abiding gift of God's holy, undivided presence that exudes from us, flows from us, comforts us and others this day and the next. I was blind, but now I see. Wash your hands and pray, my friends, for the gift of sight so that we may be healed together. Amen.
Dear friends, life is short. And we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always.